Today we're going to be taking a look at the Voluna 2 RTA by Asmodis. This product was sent to me for the purpose of this review. Let's go ahead, open it up, and see what comes with the Voluna 2 RTA. Inside of your packaging, you're going to get the Voluna 2 RTA, a spare glass tank section, an accessories bag, which is going to include O-rings and post screws for the RTA, and the Asmodis specifications manual for the RTA. And here is the Voluna V2 RTA. Now starting at the top, we do have an 810 Delrin drip tip. Now the drip tip does have the O-rings on the stem and not inside the catch cup. So you'll wanna make sure when using other drip tips, you are using drip tips with the O-rings on the stem of the drip tip. You do have this knurling here. However, it's not really needed in my opinion because this is a slide open to fill RTA. So as you can see, there is a little white marker right here and that's where you're going to push to slide open the top to fill your tank. Now the knurling there is helpful if you want to further disassemble it, this top cap portion because if you counterclockwise turn it you can go ahead and spin this off of the top and that's going to reveal the mechanism for that top fill there so we can push that out and then you can see that that does come all the way out and swings out on a hinge and that allows you to be able to replace that gasket if need be however I would like to note that although you can take this apart to remove the gasket they do not include an extra gasket for you to replace it with and I don't know if that's just an afterthought there that is why they designed it that way or if they actually sell replacement gaskets for that but we can go ahead and put that back on now the tank capacity on this is going to be 3.2 mLs of e-liquid. If we go ahead and look at the bottom of the base there, you can see it does have bottom airflow. You have a very large slot on this side and another large slot on this side. Now the airflow control is on a stopper and whatever you adjust on one side, it will adjust on the other side. To remove the base, you'll simply rotate it counterclockwise here and that's going to remove the build deck and base section. And here is your build deck. So they're calling this a Lego style or Lego block build deck. Uh, the reason why they are staggered that way is so that when you place your leads in, your top lead coming off of the coil naturally is going to be going into the top post and bottom lead will go naturally into this bottom hole on the negative post, thus centering your coils more easily. If we flip it up and look at a top down here, you can see two very large airflow tubes on either side of your airflow tube. You have these nice little cutouts here for your wicking. So once you wick your coil, you can tuck the cotton down on either side of these airflow tubes. And once you tuck your cotton in, you can see here where you'll actually be able to see your cotton. This is the inlet for the juice flow to flow up into your cotton and into your coils. Taking a look on the inside of the chimney, you can see it does have this very stepped conical section there. The airflow chimney starts out very large here where your build deck is and then it steps down to get smaller and smaller maintaining that conical shape. So it looks like a pretty straightforward build deck. We're going to go ahead and throw a build in it and wick it up and see how she goes. The coils they'll be using today are KB coils. On Instagram, you can find him at kb.vapes. These are going to be three times 28 gauge aliens wrapped in 36 gauge five wraps. Three millimeter should ohm out to a 0 0.15 ohms and it's nichrome 80. One thing I did forget to mention when I was going over what comes in the kit is that it also does come with the Oni coils by Asmodis as well as your little hex tool for the Allen screws. But I'm not going to use either of those because I actually prefer to use my own hex driver and again I'm going to be using the KB coils. So one of the things with the coils that I'm using today is they're actually actually pre-bent and adjusted so is that the leads line up which is actually counterintuitive to this build deck since it is a stepped build deck where your top lead will sit higher than your lower lead so I'll actually need to remove that pre-bent lead from the coil before installing it. I went ahead and loosened all my screws so now I should be able to just slide those coils straight in. 
simple enough. And then I can go ahead and line those up and tighten them down. So I went ahead and installed one coil. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the second coil. Now I have not pre-cut my leads on this one, so we'll see how easy it is to cut the leads after installation here. So now my leads are all tightened and I can go ahead and try and get in there and clip these. So the one on the outside is really easy to clip. Now the one on top, I might end up bending my coil a little bit, we'll see. Not too bad. So pretty easy to clip your leads after installation on this deck. Now I just want to go ahead and straighten my coils out and push them more towards the center a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I did go ahead and add a half a wrap on either side of these coils when I took out the bend in the lead. And I must say six wraps of this Alien here is quite a big coil for this build deck. As you can see, my coil runs right over, right past the edges of that airflow on either side. Here's what it looks like from the side view. And here's what it looks like from top down. Okay, so prior to pulsing, the coils are ohming out to a 0.11. I'm going to slowly pulse them at 25 watts just to make sure that they are glowing evenly. And go ahead and strum out any hot spots that I might have. Okay, so now our coils are glowing nice and evenly from the inside out and there are no hot spots. So now we're ready to go ahead and wick them. So with wicking this RTA, I'm definitely going to take the approach that more is better. And I'm going to start with my wicks fairly long here. And then I'm going to give them a nice comb out. Because with RTAs, I do like to thin out my ends quite a bit there. Just so is that the e-liquid has plenty of space to travel up into the cotton. So we're going to give it a really nice comb out there. Fluff up the ends of the wicks. Make sure all the fibers are going in the same direction. Meanwhile, maintaining volume inside of the coil so is that I don't get any spitting or popping from my coil because the wicks are too loose inside of the coil. So we're just going to thin it out on the ends only. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the wicks pretty short because of the way that they tuck down into that little nook there, I guess you would call it. Uh, there isn't a lot of space for cotton down there. So I'm just going to hold my scissors at a 45 degree angle, resting them right here on the lip of the RTA, right there at that base. I'm going to rest my scissors on that lip at a 45 degree angle and cut my cotton. So pretty short there, nice little tufts of wick. So that's what it looks like before they're tucked in. And then I'm just gonna grab my tweezers and lightly tuck the wicks into those ports. So the ports on this RTA are quite deep. So I am making sure that my cotton is going to the bottom of the port. Um, you could cut it much shorter and let them just rest kind of in the hole, but not going all the way to the bottom. But my fear with that is because this is a bottom airflow RTA, that might make it prone to leaking. So I am bringing my wicks all the way to the bottom of those ports. Once I get everything tucked in here, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So my wicks are all tucked in, and as you can see, you can see the cotton in each port on the RTA and this is where your juice flow is going to be coming in and feeding your cotton. So I wanted to make sure that my cotton is kind of a wall over that port. Now I don't have my cotton tucked in really tight. I did cut it short enough and thin it out enough that it's not too tightly packed in there but I did want to kind of create a wall of cotton over each one of those ports to make sure that not too much e-liquid is coming through and flooding the deck. And before I put my top cap on, I'm just going to lightly juice up these coils, give them a little e-liquid on each one, and lightly 
pulse that coil to let that e-liquid soak in. So I do want to be careful because you do have airflow right underneath of your coil. So don't do drip directly over top of the coil to where it's going to drip down into your airflow. Kind of paint your coils. Just do a thin layer of e-liquid over top of your coils and then give it a light pulse to let that e-liquid soak into the center of that cotton. So now that my coils are nice and juicy, I'm going to go ahead and replace the top cap there, being careful not to let that cotton get in the way of the threads. And when you are turning it to tighten it, be careful not to hold it by this top cap area. Because of the top cap here being reverse threaded, you want to make sure you hold it down here on this part of the RTA. Otherwise, you're just going to unscrew that little top cap section off of the slide out mechanism. Pretty simple to fill up the tank, no issues there. Go ahead and close it. And that is the Voluna 2 RTA by Asmodis. Let's go back up top, have a vape on it, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions. Okay, and that was an up close look at the Voluna 2 RTA. So what are my thoughts? Well, let's list off the pros first. The first pro is gonna be fit and finish. Threading and everything on this is really nice. Everything is really smooth. Next pro on this is going to be ease of build. This thing is easy as all get out to build on. I mean, really, you just throw your leads in there, tighten them down, and then trim them. It's that simple. Couldn't ask for an easier deck to build on. And what I really like is the way that they're offset and staggered means that it's easy to clip your leads as well. If you use posts where the leads go straight in and the holes are right underneath of each other, what you find is clipping your leads after you install them can be a bit of a hassle to get in there under your coils. With the way that these holes are staggered, it makes it so is that when you put your coils in, it's really easy to come from the side or come from the top and clip that lead right off. And I really like that. So building on this, a big pro. Now let's talk about wicking. I'm going to go ahead and give it a pro just because I've wicked this twice now and I feel like wicking it, there is more room for error than what I originally mentioned. It is still one of those that you got to understand bottom airflow RTAs and how they wick to be able to wick it correctly. But I did go in and I wicked it more loose and I wicked it more tight. Wicking it more tight, I've not got a single dry hit off this. Now, wicking it more loose, I did find some leaking. Again, this is a bottom airflow RTA, but it didn't leak on me until leaving it sit overnight. When I let it sit overnight and the e-liquid drawed up into those coils, it dripped down through the airflow and I came down to having a little bit of e-liquid in the airflow there. So again, you've got to understand how to wick a bottom airflow RTA, but I'm still going to give it a pro because I wicked it really tight and I didn't get a dry hit, which tells me that those wicking channels are plenty big enough for e-liquid to get in there and saturate the wicks. The next pro on this is going to be flavor. It does produce really nice flavor. It's not the most flavorful RTA out there because it is a bigger dual coa RTA. Uh, it does bring down the flavor a little bit, but I can definitely taste my e-liquid and taste all the subtle notes in that e-liquid. Now airflow on it, it does have quite a bit of airflow and I'll go ahead and let you listen to that real quick. So plenty of airflow wide open, no real restrictiveness that I feel in there. However, I do feel just a little bit of turbulence. Not sure if you can hear it audibly. Let me go ahead and vape one more time. But you hear that little bit of high-pitched whistly noise. It doesn't full out whistle, but it is a little high-pitched. I'm still going to give it a pro on the airflow because I think the airflow is smooth and it does deliver a lot of airflow as well as you can adjust it and turn it down. I find that my favorite spot for this RTA is three fourths the way open. So I'll go ahead and let you listen to how it sounds when I vape it. Uh, 
again smooth but i just detect that little bit of high pitch and some people out there wouldn't mind that for me when airflow is more on the high pitch sound it's more annoying than when it's on the lower pitch more hollow sound now let's talk about cons so i have one con for this rta kind of a design con it's the way that they reverse threaded that top housing on the slide out mechanism so while the slide out to fill is a pro it is really nice and another big pro about the slide out on here i gotta find it this is where you gotta like turn your tank and look is that they did at least mark it so there is a little white rectangle that marks where you need to push and that's a big pro because not all tanks have that little indicator for where you need to push and it does slide out real nice and smoothly and it has a nice little stiffness to it so it doesn't feel like it's something that's going to accidentally open in your pocket though there is no locking mechanism on the slide out and i kind of wish there was because there is always that possibility of you bumping it and it opening so i do wish it had a locking mechanism but my con for it is the reverse threading and the reason why it's a con for me is when i'm putting my tank onto my mod i almost a hundred percent of the time will grab it by the top to spin it on but once that threading starts to tighten down onto the mod what i find is i unscrew that top cap section and i it drives me nuts every time almost that I have put this on a mod I go to screw it down and I forget and I don't hold it by the barrel I hold it by the top and I unscrew that top cap and then it gets loose and wiggly and doesn't slide open correctly so I wish they would have put a locking mechanism on there because that would have solved the whole problem it would have solved the problem with the reverse threading and it would have solved the problem of it being slide out and the possibility of you opening it accidentally and spilling e-liquid. So that's my thoughts on the Voluna 2 RTA. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, click that subscribe button. And until next time, you guys, bye-bye.